Hi, my name is Toby Ramos, and this morning I'm here to show you the vulcanization process of repairing these big behemoth tires. My process that I've developed over the last five years is to get these tires out of the landfill where once they were discarded as trash, rebuild these things and put them out back to work, saving the customers, our farmers, civil engineering companies, lots of money and helping out our environment. When it comes to the farmers, these tires are always in between the fields and it gets the harsh environments of roots and big old rocks. Rocks are tires we're standing me out in the field. Whether it's civil engineering projects or farm projects or even tracks that I'll show you right now. These things will damage a tire and damage your profits. This is a $7,000 tire, brand new. Went out to the field about 200 hours on it, just ruined the tire. It's a classic example of how a tire is just in the trash. These tracks right here have always been the new innovative tire process for all these skid steers, but these things are almost three times as much as these tires. They're very expensive. But with the torque of the Bobcat, if it digs one of these in, it'll ruin a track like this, which is about two, three thousand dollars. The same process that I've applied to this, I've applied over here, and it's made a lot of civil engineering companies happy because they save them tons of money. Let me show you. We'll begin with the hardest part of fixing a tire by what you call a cable replacement. Whenever a tire hits a rock and the tire gets damaged, when we skive into it, we'll open it up right here and we'll see what the damage is. 75% of it, the cables don't even get hurt. But once in a while, you'll get something where the cables will get damaged. And when you get a good tire like this, that's almost brand new, there's a process called the cable replacement program made by TapRap. What you do is we'll skive into it, cut out the cables, okay? Because cables, the steel belts, are very important to the tire. It's like the rebar to a bridge. So what we do is we take the rebar out and replace it with the Kevlar patch that's got cable in it. We'll go in there, clean it all up to the contour of the damage, go inside the bead, voila. So this will replace the new cables that got damaged and you get to save yourself a brand new tire. This kind of a process is the most tedious process to fix. On some of the tires, it's not worth it, but when it gets to a tire like this that's really expensive, it's worth fixing it. As you've seen, we've cleaned all the cables out, buffed it all down, and it has to be super clean for a patch like this to hold. Our next step, we'll put the patch from the inside to pull it out from the outside. Then we put a patch over it, and then we fill in the cavity that we used to extrude it. It's a long process, and sometimes it's worth the investment on your investment. I showed you the tap wrap system. That's cable replacement. That's probably the most complicated thing you could do to a tire. And if the tire is expensive and almost new, it's worth it. This right here is about 75% of the damages to all the tires when it comes to OTR and farm tires. Here we're gonna use this as a perfect specimen of a farm tire problem. A brand new tire, thing has maybe about 200 hours into it, and he ran over a big rock out in the field picking up tomatoes. In the old days, you'd throw this in the trash because there's nothing you could do about it. The damage is that big. But what we've been doing for the last couple of years, and our failure rate's really nothing, is we're gonna turn around, and with me and Leo, we're gonna fix this tire, and we're gonna show you how it works, and you're gonna be really impressed. <laughs> As you see Leo buffing out the outside, he's skiving out the problem, the injury. Once he realizes the extent of the damage, he'll go in there, stop the damage up from the outside, go in and figure out the size of patch he needs. We'll buff it all down nice and evenly. A good tire buffer knows exactly how to do it. We'll turn around, scrape out all the excess with some rubble solvent, it takes a lot of time and a lot of expertise to fix these tires, but in the end, it's worth it because you save your investment. We'll put some good Volchem thermal sealer. As it acts as a glue. 
Once it's all buffed, cleaned out, and we got the glue on it, we start the process with these kind of patches. They're American-made tech patches with an Aramic liner on the inside. It's got two layers on the bottom, so it fortifies the patch. That's the secret for the failure rate being so low on these repairs. These patches are just as good as the Rima patches made in Germany. And what I like about them is they're made here in Missouri, in the good old USA. And now we're gonna finish off with putting extruded rubber on the outside to fortify the patch. That's everybody's worry all the time where the tire won't hold, but it's getting double wrapped from each side when it comes to the patch. You've seen the repair on a typical agriculture tire. We put a lot of work to it. Now we're gonna put it on the machine and let's cook it. What this machine does is pretty much, it's like an oven with the tires and the patch. It'll turn around and cook it at about 450 degrees, all evenly, and that's the secret to such a beautiful, vulcanized job. Where this acts as an oven, is this is a heat plate right here, a heat mattress goes to about 450 degrees, we lie it right on top of the patch. So you put it on the inside of the patch with the billet on the outside, plow, cooks it like an iron. We'll put this airbag that inflates up to 35 PSI with pressure right on top of the heat mat. That's the second process to it. Now our next process is after we've put in the heat mat and the pressure bag, these things are silica sandbags that transfer the, and radiate the heat nice and evenly. Very smart secret to this. Next thing we do with hydraulic, this will press all the way in so it can evenly heat this up. The whole point to this is so it all locks up. Once it locks up, we turn it on to 450 degrees, let it cook like the way mama would cut meatloaf. We've set up the farm tire and it's cooking for about an hour to an hour and a half to cook it right. But you're wondering what's gonna be the end result. As you can see, here's the end result. This is the top shoulder repair. Nice clean cut. This is a bottom shoulder repair. Beautifully clean cut right here. That's the beauty of this kind of work. And here's a crown repair. Once everything's done, we'll turn around, spray them, make them look pretty. Even though they'll get dirty again, we always like painting them just so they look like new. Because to us, integrity and craftsmanship means a lot. And there you have it. We do a final inspection on it and we're ready to go back to hit the farm fields. We've showed you the process of our revolutionary concept of vulcanizing tires the 21st century way. We vulcanize everything from big earth mover tires, farm tires, skid skier tires, backhoe tires, even truck tires. In the last couple of years, I've made a lot of customers happy by saving their tire, which is part of their profits. And to me, it's not really about the money. I like seeing that customer's face when they're like, Oh my God, he saved my tire. To me, that's priceless, and I mean that. My name's Toby Ramos. I started this business about 18 years ago with $1,000 and a dream with my wife with me. I've always been honest with all my customers, and I've always been very straightforward. This process that I built has saved a lot of people money and given a lot of people jobs. I enjoy what I do. I've been doing this for years. And with this revolutionary concept, fixing the sidewalls, the beads, the crowns, the shoulders, it'll keep me and my family in business for hopefully another 40, 50 years. Thank you for looking us up.